church, would you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, won't you once again fall afresh on us? God, would you speak? May we hear. And may those words, those feelings, all the things that you pour out in this morning, may they find good soil in our hearts. God, we love you and pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whenever I smell garlic, onions, and sesame oil, I'm reminded of home, especially the apartment of my parents in Los Angeles. You know, I remember the first time I came home after going through my first round of finals at my institution. And I think that was the first time I was away from home for longer than a month. Honestly, it feels like yesterday. I remember walking into the building and smelling the fragrance of garlic, onions, and sesame oil, filling up every corner of the building and also filling up all of my pores on my face. And when I walked into my parents' apartment, I saw a table. And this table was adorned with all of my favorite side dishes, a bowl of freshly made rice filled over the brim, and one of my favorite dishes in the whole world, a big old pot of kimchi stew waiting for me, calling my name. My mother's hands created this meal. My mother's hands created this banquet. And the smells of this banquet filled the room with the fragrances of heaven, overwhelming me with love. I cried many tears that night as I ate that meal. See, that memory, that moment taught me a truth. And that truth is this. Our hands, our actions create fragrances. And you see, this truth is also backed by scripture. Back in the day, way back when, before we had internet and cell phones, the Israelites produced and gave animal and grain offerings to God. And the priests of the temple would take those offerings, put them in the altar, would light them on fire. And the smoke and the fragrances of those offerings would fill the temple and they would also reach up to the heavens because they believed that those fragrances of the offering actually met God. And those fragrances moved God's heart towards forgiveness, blessings, and ultimately drew God closer to God's people. What we, church, create with our hands, what we offer up to God produces a fragrance and this fragrance lingers. And it actually has the power to move God's heart. In this passage, Jesus was invited over to Mary and Martha's house. And there was a banquet prepared for Jesus. And as they ate this delicious meal, Mary brings out a very expensive ointment. And she brings it out, she breaks open the ointment and the liquid falls on Jesus' feet. And then she proceeds to adorn, to anoint them, wiping them down with her hair. And the aroma fills the house. Mary and Martha's hands not only fed Jesus, but actually allowed Jesus to experience love. And that act and that love was also a powerful act of justice. You see, their hospitality and their lavish giving affirmed Jesus' deep humanity and Jesus' presence here on this earth. This is actually juxtaposed by in two weeks' time, Jesus' humanity would actually be stripped away from him by, by the Roman Empire and by those that offered Jesus away. 
when I think about this story, when I think about Mary and Martha, when I think about my mother's hands, I am compelled to believe that the works of their hands, the fragrances that they produce, were preparing Jesus and the disciples for what was to come. As we are in this last leg of the Lenten season, a season of reflecting and reevaluating who we are and who we belong to, there's a question that God placed in my heart that I want to extend to all of us here. What is your fragrance? What is the fragrance of Old South Church? So I've been here roughly three months now, and I've been kind of just taking in all the fragrances of this church. And if you'll give me a moment, I want to share with you what I have smelled. I have smelled that we are a church with a painful history. We have housed the hands of abolitionists and freedom fighters, and also the hands of those who have enslaved. We are also a church that is in a very beautiful process of slowly reckoning with that history, of asking for forgiveness, and doing beautiful things like the Memorial Tree Project in a columbarium. I have also smelled that our church is on a journey, amen? And this journey is doing our best to stand true to being, after, to being people after God's own heart, to be a congregation that honors God, honors God's love, and honors God's love for justice. And I have seen it evidenced this way. When we joined the new sanctuary movements to combat inhumane immigration policies, when we made an oath to tackle the climate crisis by transitioning into becoming a greener church, when we not only have addressed, but are actively trying to fight against racism through the creation of beautiful ministries like Grace Speaks, when we became active partners with the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization and the City of Boston to help create pathways for permanent housing for those who are unhoused, and when we fought for marriage equality and more fully integrating the queer spirituality of our worshiping life, for, like, fully and firmly believing that our LGBTQIA plus siblings are created in God's image. Amen? Amen? God receives the worship of God's people when it is saturated with the works of justice. Now, I don't know if Martha and Mary considered their banquets and their adorning as worship, and there may, they may or may not have been aware that they were active in God's liberation work on earth. But Old South Church, I am here to tell you a truth. God receives, blesses, and sanctifies worship when it is imbued with justice. Because worship and justice for God goes hand in hand. You see, I believe that God receives our worship here in this community, in this congregation, because we have made a commitment to be a congregation that pursues justice. So don't give up. Do you hear me, church? Don't give up. Keep pushing. Keep pursuing justice and keep creating the fragrances that move the heart of God. I firmly believe that God is preparing us here at Old South Church to become greater vessels of God's love and work in this world. So again, I ask this question and I leave you with this question. What is your fragrance? What is our fragrance? May it be one that moves the heart of God. Amen.